<laughs> Growing up, uh, you and Nate Lee were big fans of comic books, especially Marvel's X-Men graphic novels. What was it that most appealed to you about them? So I grew up in uh, Virginia Beach, Virginia with Nate, uh, who is the co-writer of New Mutants with me and my best friend. I've, we've known each other since uh, the day we were born and we grew up reading Marvel comics religiously. Uh, we were very much attracted to the New Mutants, uh, which is kind of right from the era in the 80s when we were really reading comics religiously. Uh, it was really Bill Sinkovich's artwork. It's like I had never seen comics that looked like his before they pushed the medium and what uh what you came to expect it's like when you see a comic book they all look kind of the same i mean they're varying degrees of great art but like he really pushed the medium in an artistic way he pushed the frames of the comics he pushed what you could do with the page of a comic book panel uh and he really injected it with a lot of darkness and a lot of moodiness and uh you know, the kids didn't wear, wear costumes. It felt like something different. Uh, I always remembered it and hung on to it. And uh, once I had made The Fault in Our Stars for Fox and it was a success, I, uh, Nate and I made them a comic book and brought it to them and basically said, please let us develop this and try to turn it into a movie. And uh, they were nice enough to say yes. Great, thank you. So next question, this story deals with new mutants who are grappling with their new mutant abilities which include feelings of insecurity, persecution, angst, and typical growing pains. Being a teenager is a horror story in itself. Do you think teenagers today face similar issues and problems? And what, what was uh, the appealing aspect to you? Um, let me think of a good way to restate that. Uh, so, I mean, I, I guess, let me, let, me, let me try, let me try it this way. Uh, I've always been a fan of, uh, I guess I'd say teen films or films that were coming of age films, films about kids growing up, uh, since I was that age. And when I was that age, I felt, uh, is awkward and out of sorts as any other kid does. And I think that's sort of a, uh, that's a universal feeling that happens no matter what era that you live in or, uh, where you live. I think you experience all these sort of universal feelings, uh, capturing those and trying to capture a little bit of how I felt, uh, how the movies, the teen movies that I loved made me feel growing up, like say anything and uh, John Hughes's films and, uh, eh, you know, just movies like that are movies that I certainly loved. They were friends to me when I was a kid. So we tried to make a movie that would hopefully be friends to kids going through the same issues that we went through and the same issues that uh, I imagine most kids go through. That, Great. Should, yeah. Should I try no. that one again? <laughs> no, I think that's fine. Thank you. Uh, next question. Can you talk about the response from fans on this film and what the fans devotion means to you as a filmmaker? Did you feel a sense of pressure to live up to fans memories of the original graphic novels? No, I mean, you, you know, as, as far as the fans go, I'm deeply grateful. And I know the cast is Nate is uh, Bill Sinkovich is, uh, you know, they've really stuck with us for several years. Uh, and instead of, you know, whining and complaining about it, they've uh, instead, you know, made an incredible amount of artwork and continued to keep it alive online. They've done everything they could just to keep it in the public consciousness. So I've been uh, really, really indebted to them and grateful to them. But uh, as far as like if I was trying to if I if you were going to ask me if uh, did I think about them a lot when I was creating the movie and making the movie with Nate, the answer would be no, we were really trying to live up to our own memories as fans, we were sort of mega Marvel fans. Uh, so we were trying to live up to our own uh, standards, I guess, uh, and hoped that by pleasing ourselves, we would please fans. Awesome. Okay, uh, The New Mutants is the first horror thr thriller to be set in Marvel's X-Men universe and the first big studio film to come out after months and months of quarantining due to the global COVID-19 pandemic. Many people see horror films as a means of escape. What are your thoughts? And do you enjoy watching a scary movie in a dark theater? Why? Uh, that was that multi question. That was a multi, there's multiple parts of that question. <laughs> uh, um, so this is one of the very first films to open in theaters since the COVID-19 pandemic has begun. Uh, I think that's an incredible thing. I think it's important that people go back to the movies. I'm really, really excited that it's gonna screen in IMAX because we really wanted the, uh, the final act of this, the final battle where these characters have to uh, 
battle this massive supernatural bear be seen on the biggest screen possible. Uh, it's also, you know, in some ways the first horror superhero movie in a long time. Uh, certainly since the current phase of Marvel films and all that, I can think back about Blade and things like that. But uh, this one really involved teens in a way that I thought uh, had a bit of an echo of 90s horror movies and 80s horror movies that I loved when I was young. And uh, I certainly loved watching those. We rented them from the from the video store all the time when I was a kid. Uh, I wasn't uh, able to go see them at the theater when I was young, but I was able to rent uh, some Nightmare on Elm Street movies and things like that that Nate and I would watch and we would get really scared and uh, have to run back to his house and watch Better Off Dead to uh, to, to be able to go to sleep at night. So so I think we, we enjoyed doing all that and wanted to bring a little bit of that to it. Uh, but even more so, wanted to find an interesting way to tell a story about kids again uh, in this genre and also meld the superhero genre in. But it wasn't... Uh, it wasn't a calculated move. It was sort of, that was what the comic books were. So we were very much uh, organically trying to adapt them into the medium. And that's what this was. It was a horror movie to some degree or another. And about the horror of being young and uh, it fit the, the, the typical X-Men thing of trying to dramatize sort of feelings that uh, one has when one's an outcast or an outsider in society. And I think teenagers feel like that in general. Awesome, thank you. Okay, so most big studio films which are based on comic books and involve characters with superhuman abilities are shot on sound stages. But The yeah. New Mutants was filmed on location in an abandoned hospital which was run down and in much need of repair. Was that something that was important in helping you get your actors in character? And if so, why? Um, so unlike most superhero films, uh, which uh, a lot of them are shot on giant sound stages, the sets that you see are mostly just sets. They're way bigger than, uh, I mean, I say it would be in real life, but who knows what the Avengers headquarters would look like. But you know what I mean? It's like uh, we went and shot in a real place, which made it a very interesting, uh, I think, movie visually when you compare it to other superhero movies. It gave it its own aesthetic and its own character. Uh, we shot in a 150 year old psychiatric hospital that had been closed for probably 50 years. Uh, a lot of, uh, I would say, I don't want to say supernatural, but I'd say there were strange things that happened while we worked there. There was a lot of kind of dark and creepy stories uh, that the caretaker there would tell us about various patients that had stayed there, various rooms there where things had happened. Some of these rooms we shot in that sort of gave the whole thing its own interesting atmosphere. And also, you know, when you're in a room as small as their, the cells were that they actually use for people, the, the rooms that people stayed in, uh, you kind of see the difference between our movie and other superhero movies. Uh, the locations just feel more real and feel more grounded. Uh, and, you know, it was a whole world. You could go from upstairs to downstairs and look in everybody's rooms. Uh, it was all of one piece uh, as much as possible it was. And uh, it was a whole world that we could kind of go shoot in and explore. So uh, it helped get us in the mood. It helped get the actors and character in the mood because uh, you really felt like you were there. You could go walk around the grounds. Awesome. And last question. Uh, we understand you were involved with the soundtrack as well. Can you tell us about that? Well, it's funny, uh, the music is obviously a big part of what I've done on my movies. I've generally written songs into the scripts for movies, produced the soundtracks to the movies, have a playlist that I give actors when the, we go to make it, uh, or even when the script goes out. This was a little different because it was, uh, it was so score driven and it didn't have as much of a, a place for pop songs and songs you know, that I loved over my life. I was able to get in uh, the replacements anthem Bastards of Young, which was important to me because uh, Nate and I's next project we're going to go make is an adaptation of Bob Mir's bestseller about the band The Replacements called Trouble Boys, uh, which will have a bunch of actors from the stand and a bunch of other great people in it. Uh, getting that one in was important because we were very much already developing that when we were making New Mutants, when just to give you an idea of how long projects take. Uh, you know, we just finished the scripts to those and we started maybe four years ago working on it when we were shooting New, Muni New Mutants or three years ago. Uh, eh, now I'm lost. What was I talking about? <laughs> the music. I was talking about the music. So uh, music certainly a big part of what we do. Uh, this was an interesting circumstance. My uh, films, the composers are always Nate Walcott and Mike Mogus from the band Bright Eyes. 
So they did the original score for this movie, what they were able to complete before the merger happened. And then when the movie actually needed to be completed, they were working on my stand series. Uh, they were working on the series of the stand doing all the, uh, doing all the composing for that. Cause I had brought all my people over to work on that, including my editors. So I went and asked my very favorite composer from when I was young, Mark Snow, who composed every X-Files episode and Millennium and all of, uh, all of Chris Carter's stuff. Uh, I you know, asked him to come and merge some of my guy's soundtrack, my guy's score with a lot of other stuff that he did. So I kept some of the, uh, the central thematic pieces that Nate and Mike had done and then asked Mark to come in and do the rest. Uh, which was sort of a strange but interesting situation to be in where like Nate Walcott would sometimes come in when the orchestra was there and Mark would be there. And uh, it was cool. Uh, he was one of my very favorite composers since I was very young, his music's so iconic. And he was uh, in the Fox family in a way that I felt like we could get him to come out of retirement and come do it. So uh, he did very much stop what he was doing and, uh, and came and finished this score for us. And he's uh, such a gentleman and a nice guy. Uh, uh, so yeah, so we use several different people to finish this ultimately. So it has a, a non-traditional score, I would say. That's awesome. Thank you so much. That was our last 